Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It has been another nightmare. And uh, you know, if this wasn't my life, I'd be watching YouTube, you know, watching some poor guy talk about his Ferrari or whatever as well. And so I just have to separate this and pretend like I'm watching my own life from afar so I don't take things too uh, horribly. Let me tell you what happened. I got up the other day to get my daughter ready for school. We get in the car. I notice my tire pressure sensor says that I only have half a pound of pressure in one of my tires. So I looked and sure enough, I picked up a nail. If you watched the last episode, I just picked up a nail or a screw in the Ferrari tire um, the week before. My buddy Mike at Fur Parts got me a good deal on a rim. I had it repaired at Precision Wheel Works and I had it all ready to go to put on the car, but it's been really raining here. And uh, so I've just been kind of waiting until it's a nicer day to get everything taken care of. Anyway, I daily drive a uh, BMW SUV and the tire was completely flat. And I'm just like, man, my freaking luck. So I'm like, uh, okay, well, I don't want her to be super late uh, to school. So I had these run flats on the tire, or, yeah, installed on the car. I'm like, okay, we just got to get to the gas station so I can pump it full air real quick, just so I can get you to school so then I can get a new tire put on this thing. So I get to the gas station, I'm trying to fill it up, and I get all these people like asking me for money. And I'm just like, wow, now is not the time. Like, I'm just like rushing against the clock. I'm so sick of car issues. I pump it full of air and I'm watching it. Meanwhile, like her school is only five miles away from here, but I'm watching it on the tire pressure sensor just go down and down from like 30 PSI to like 20 in just a matter of a minute. So anyway, I get her to school. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll pick you up. I'm not really sure what car I'll be in or what, but I'll pick you up later. So then I take the BMW to Les Schwab uh, in Sacramento. They have been over the moon, great customer service. I really like working with these guys. I've been taking my cars there for years. Um, they've always patched the tires or got me some new ones at a good deal. Or it, It's just been a pleasant experience, okay? So I get there and they do have one set uh, somewhere in the area that they have to go get but I needed new tires on this car anyway, so I'm not really that upset about that it happened. It was just bad timing, you know? This might be a good opportunity because it was a sunny day. I just got the wheel back for the Ferrari uh, the day before, and I'm like, what if I go home and drive the Ferrari to Les Schwab, have them, because the wheel of the Ferrari is actually in the back of the BMW. What if I have them, you know, swap it out, uh, put the new tire on the rim, and then uh, swap out all the four tires on the BMW, and then I'll have two cars with working rubber at least, right? So I walk home from the tire shop because it's only a few miles away from my house. I thought, nah, it's a nice morning to go for a walk, release some stress. And uh, so I walk home and I go to start the car, this beauty right here, and it doesn't start. So in the one week, by the way, I just put a new battery in this thing like, I don't know, two months ago. But the one week that I didn't drive or start it or, you know, move it around the driveway or whatever, it's dead. I don't have a portable jump starter. You can't just jump start these cars. And so I hook it up to the trickle charger, hoping that maybe in eight hours or so I can start the car and I could resume my plans. It's a very stressful morning because I kind of assumed that would all work because I had two important meetings I needed to get to. Called my partner and I was like, hey, can I borrow your car? Uh, if I take an Uber to your, your work, can I just borrow your car for the day so I can run my errands, pick up the kiddo from school, et cetera, et cetera. And she's like, oh yeah, sure, man, no problem. Why she's still with me, you know, at this point. I don't know, but I'm very thankful. <laughs> and um, anyways, so... I, I pick up her car and then um, I get a call from Les Schwab uh, around two o'clock saying, oh, sir, your car is ready to be picked up. And I'm like, oh, well, this might work out perfectly for the timing because I have to pick up, remember, the kid from school. So I ended up taking a scooter to the tire shop, paid for the new tires, 
then dashed over to her school, picked her up, and then was able to make car arrangements and return cars and all this stuff. I wait a few days for the trickle charger to charge the battery enough, and then finally I get the Ferrari started. I take it to Les Schwab. They swap it out uh, with the new wheel. Looks great. Runs, I mean, as well as this car runs. So I'm like, okay, cool. I was able to drive it a couple miles back home, park it, and then Christmas Eve rolls around. And I had this bright idea like, hey, why don't we drive 30 miles in the Ferrari to pick up a pie to take to dinner? Uh, Because we had some family plans. So everything was working great on the car for, once again, considering the car this is. But what I'm doing when I drive this is I don't really go super high on the RPMs. Uh, I try and only keep it on the freeway and not do a lot of start and stop uh, to mess with the transmission or whatever. So I'm driving it very gingerly is what I'm saying. We pick up the pie, have a hamburger, and we start to drive back home. And then I look in the rear view mirror and all I see is smoke. So I'm just like, this is it. This is the moment all you (laughs) YouTube viewers have been commenting saying, you gotta stop driving that thing. It's gonna catch on fire. It's gonna catch on fire. I don't think it caught on fire, but what happened was the radiator hose blew, shot radiator fluid all over, I'm sorry, coolant all over the engine bay. And I pulled over immediately, turned off the car, and um, popped the back open, and all the steams come rushing out, right? And uh, so I'm waiting on the side of the freeway, and it's a very busy night. I mean, it's Christmas Eve, right? Lots of people are going to their families and everything. And I'm just thinking, geez, like, what do I even do? The insurance company I have uh, is very hard to get a hold of as it is. They do towing reimbursement, meaning I pay for a tow truck and then I submit a receipt and they'll give me up to $100 on my tow. It's a sucky insurance policy. I totally don't recommend it. We just waited for it to cool down. um, And then I drove it across the like on ramp so I could put it in like a safer spot. So I'm not standing on the side of the freeway. I'm just trying to figure out my options. And uh, so I'm calling, I'm calling people. Obviously no one's available. Like we're sort of stranded. I'm about 30 minutes away from home. Uh, It's way too far to drive it any longer. And so I called my dad who lives about five or 10 miles away. And I was like, hey, can we meet you in this city Uh, to where we can figure out a tow truck situation. I went to a gas station. I put in uh, a bunch of coolant. It just went on the ground. It was a complete waste of money. Just so I can get it about five minutes down the road uh, without damaging the engine. Uh, Because that's where we needed to meet up, is a a bigger parking lot where a flatbed could fit and it would just be a better situation. We get it there. Uh, It's at this Bel Air parking lot. And it's around 6 p.m. And uh, we're calling all these tow truck companies and either people aren't picking up the phone or they're saying, oh, we're only handling law enforcement phone calls right now. We don't have any flatbeds available for you. Sorry, you're out of luck. I'm like, what What do you mean? And I've called like 10 places by now. I'm like, what? You can't get a tow truck? I'm like, I understand it's Christmas Eve. I'm assuming I'm going to be charged up the butt for this thing, but I'm like, we can't just leave it in this parking lot. We just ended up getting a bunch of gallons of water and I drove it about 15 miles, um, pulling off to the side of the road, filling it up, waiting for it to cool, drive a little more, repeat, repeat. And then finally we got it to my dad's house and uh, that's where it sat in the garage for a couple of days. Then um, on the 27th, Uh, I called my favorite tow truck company and I was like, hey, thank goodness you guys are available today. Can we ship this back uh, to my house? And I had the same awesome tow truck driver, Austin. He handles these cars with great care. And um, anyway, that's why it's, you know, it's here again. I guess it's good news. I don't know. Uh, When you have a coolant line, brake or a hose or something like that. 
that those usually get replaced during a major service when you get the belts done and everything. And honestly, before all this Ferrari mess happened with the CNC motors and then all the repairs and all the craziness, um, I was going to have all the rubber switched out anyways, meaning all the belts, hoses. And, uh, but since, you know, I don't even have the title of this car and I'm not paying for repairs on it until I get the title. I just kind of been in a standstill with it. And so I just, yeah, the hoses need to be replaced clearly. Uh, so at this point it is not drivable. Um, I don't even want to start the thing. It is on a trickle charger, uh, just to keep the battery up, I guess. But um i yeah merry christmas <laughs> i hope all you had a much nicer christmas eve than i did now i can't even really take it to the corporate events where i would like rent it as like a prop and it's just uh it's a big red brick in the garage right now i did finally talk to the owner of the title of this car on the phone the other day and so i do have an update coming about that but other than that um, yeah, I guess if things could get worse, they did. So happy new year. <laughs>